On October 2nd, Gsep spotlighted this incredible website as their site of the day on Twitter. It stood out to me right away, packed with fresh, unique animations that felt smooth and visually striking. One interaction in particular really caught my eye, this seamlessly staged timeline animation on their about page for the team section. As you scroll, placeholders for the team cards slide in one by one, each showing just the initial letter of a team member's name and the entire section pins in place while this unfolds. Then, as you continue scrolling, the actual profile cards animate in from the side, landing right on top of their respective placeholders before the section eventually unpins and scrolls away. I thought the entire sequence was clever and well executed, so I decided to try rebuilding it from scratch using just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript powered by GSAP and scroll trigger. After a few hours of experimenting, I managed to recreate the core animation timeline, including most of the card transformations. In today's video, I'll walk you through exactly how I built it step by step so you can understand how to create similar scroll driven animations for your own projects. If you find these kinds of rebuilds helpful, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. First, I'm creating two simple sections, one at the top with the class hero and another at the bottom with the class outro. This gives the page a bit of vertical structure and they also help us bookend the scroll animation with some breathing room. Inside each one, I'm just dropping a heading and h1 tag with some placeholder text just so the page doesn't feel empty when we are scrolling through. Now between these two sections, we are going to build the team section itself. I am adding a new section with the class team. This is the main wrapper that will hold all of our team member cards. Inside this section, we are defining the structure for each individual card. To do that, I am creating a div with the class team member. This is our parent container. We'll style it later as a placeholder that the actual card can animate into. Inside every team member area, there are two key elements. The first is a div with the class team member name initial and the second element is another div with the class team member card. This is the actual card that will animate in later. Now, team member name initial is where I'll put a large single letter H1, the initial of the team member's name. This letter will appear first as a placeholder before the full card slides in. Inside the card, we are splitting it into two parts, an image container with the class team member image which just holds an image tag for the profile picture and a second container with the class team member info where we'll place a paragraph for the role and an h1 for the full name with the last name wrapped in a span for styling flexibility. That's the basic structure for one team member. Once that's in place, we simply copy and paste this whole team member block two more times and update the initials, the role, the name and the image source for the other two members. This gives us three team member cards in total, each following the exact same structure. And that's pretty much it for the HTML. Next, we'll move on to the CSS to style everything and prepare it for the scroll trigger transitions. First, I've imported two typefaces from Google Fonts. We are using Bardo Condensed for the bold, oversized headings and DM Mono for the smaller details like role descriptions. Then, I'm setting up a few custom colors using root variables. There is a dark background for the base, a light off-white tone for the cards, and a bright orange accent will use throughout the animation. Now, let's set the global styles. I'm removing all default spacing and making sure elements follow a consistent box model just to keep the layout predictable as we go. Next, I'm setting the base styles for the page. The body uses our main typeface with a dark background and light foreground text. It's clean and minimal, which works really well with the bold animation we are going to build. Images are set to fully cover their containers and crop neatly inside their frames. For the main headings, I'm making them all uppercase and really bold. They are oversized, tight in line spacing and meant to feel like strong design elements on the page. For smaller text, like the team roles, I am switching to the monospaced font. It's also uppercase, just more subtle in size and weight, so it doesn't compete with the main headlines. Now let's style the layout for each section. I'm giving all sections full height and hiding any overflow. This makes sure our animations stay contained. There is also a bit of padding to keep everything from hugging the edges. The content inside hero and outro sections are centered in both directions. Inside them, the heading sits in the middle of the screen and uses the accent color to stand out clearly against the dark background. Now let's move on to the team section. 
We are displaying it as a flex layout so all three team members sit side by side with some space between them. Each member takes up equal space, has rounded corners and gets a subtle dashed border. This acts as the placeholder zone where the card will eventually slide in. To control the layer order during animation, I am stacking them using the index, so the first card sits on top, the second one behind that and the third one at the bottom. Now inside each team member block, we start with the initial letter. This is placed exactly at the center using transforms and it's huge, meant to represent the first letter of the team member's name before the full card arrives. The color here is our orange accent and we'll animate the scale of this letter later on. Then we have the actual card that slides in. It's also centered within its parent and it has the same width and height as the container including the offset for the borders. I've added some padding and rounded corners and we are using a vertical layout to stack everything inside. This will feel like a smooth layer that animates over the placeholder. The image container is a perfect square with rounded edges and the image inside will crop cleanly so it doesn't overflow. Below that, the info section is also centered and stacked vertically. We have got the role at the top in small text and the name below in large bold type. The last name is wrapped in a span so we can style it separately, in this case using the dark background color to create contrast against the lighter card. Now let's define the initial animation states. Each team member placeholder area starts off pushed down from the screen. The initial letter is scaled all the way down so it's hidden. And the card themselves are offset to the right, slightly rotated and scaled down. Each one is pushed away a little more than the last, which pushes all the cards way out of the screen and gives us that layered sliding effect we are going to animate later. Finally, I've added some responsive styling for smaller screens. When the screen width drops below a certain point, we shrink down the text, remove the width limits on the headings and switch the team section to a vertical layout instead of horizontal. Each card is centered and stacked with some spacing between them and we remove all the transforms so the layout sits naturally without animation. The initials are now fully scaled up by default and the cards are reset to full scale with no rotation. And that's it for the CSS, we have styled the full layout, set the stage for all our scroll based animations and made sure everything responds properly on smaller screens. Next, we'll move into JavaScript and bring all of this to life using GSAP and Scroll Trigger. First of all, I'm importing the tools we'll be using for this build. We are bringing in GSAP to handle all the animations, Scroll Trigger to sync them with the user scroll, and Lennis, a lightweight library that gives us smooth buttery scrolling. Next, I'm wrapping everything inside a DOM content loaded event. This just makes sure the page has finished loading before we start selecting elements or triggering animations. Inside that, the first thing we do is register the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP. This step is always required whenever we are using scroll trigger, otherwise the animations won't work. After that, I am setting up Lennis, we create a new instance and tell it to listen to scroll events. Then we connect Lennis to GSAP's internal trigger so GSAP knows when to update during scroll. This keeps everything perfectly synced between our smooth scroll and the scroll based animations. Next. We are grabbing the elements we'll be animating. We are selecting the main team section, then converting all the individual team member area blocks into an array and doing the same for all the team member cards inside them. This just makes it easier to loop through everything later. And finally, for this block, I am setting up two variables. These will hold references to the scroll triggers we are about to create, one for the placeholder entrance and one for the card slide in animation. This way, we can clean them up or refresh them later if the screen resizes. That's the setup, in the next block, we'll start defining how the animations actually work. Now to organize everything cleanly, I'm creating a new function called init team animations. This is where we'll define all the animation logic from the entrance of the placeholders to the full cut slide in sequence. 
I like keeping it inside a dedicated function like this, so it's easy to reset or rerun when needed, especially on resize. Right after defining the function, I'm calling it at the bottom of the script, just wants to kick things off as soon as the page loads. This way, I can walk you through each animation one step at a time and we can preview how it behaves in the browser as we build it out. In the next step, we'll start with a quick check for screen size and add logic to reset or disable the animation on smaller devices. Inside the function, the first thing I'm doing is checking the screen size. If the window width is below 1000 pixels, which basically means we are on a tablet or a phone, then we don't want to run any of the scroll triggered animations. So right away, I'm checking if any animations already exist and if they do, I'm killing them. This just makes sure we are not leaving any old scroll triggers active in the background. Then I'm looping through all the team member elements and clearing any inline styles that may have been added by GSAP during previous animations. I am doing the same thing for the large initials inside each member block and also for all the cards themselves. This resets everything back to a clean state with no transforms or overrides so the layout stacks properly on smaller screens. After that, I just return early and skip the rest of the function. There is no point running any scroll based logic if we are on a small device. Right after that mobile block, I am also repeating the same kill check again just to be safe. If this is a larger screen and the function is being reinitialized for any reason, we want to make sure we are starting fresh without any duplicate triggers. Next, we'll start building the first scroll animation, the placeholder entrance. Alright, now we are setting up our first scroll trigger. This one handles the placeholder entrance animation, but the team member blocks rise up into view and reveal their initial letters. We are creating a new scroll trigger instance and assigning it to a variable called card placeholder entrance. First, I'm telling it what to watch. In this case, we are using the main team section as the trigger. The animation begins when the top of the team section hits the bottom of the viewport, basically when it starts coming into viewport and ends when the top of that section reaches the top of the screen. This gives us a nice vertical range to work with. I've also enabled scrub, which means the animation is fully tied to the scroll. So as you scroll forward or backward, the movement plays in sync. Now inside the on update callback, I'm tracking the scroll progress. This value goes from 0 to 1 based on how far we are between the start and end. Then I'm looping through all the team members one by one and I'm calculating when each one should animate in. I'm giving each member a slight delay so they don't all animate at the same time. The delay increases with each index which creates a nice staggered entrance. Then I'm checking where we are in the scroll timeline. If this scroll is within the window for that member's entrance, we calculate how far into the animation they should be. Based on that, I move the entire team member upward by adjusting its vertical position, starting fully pushed down and easing it into place as we scroll. At the same time, I'm targeting the initial letter inside that block and scaling it up from zero to full size. I'm also delaying that scale a little so the block slides in first and then the letter pops into view shortly after. If you have already scrolled past that member's entrance completely, I'm snapping everything into place. The team member sits at the top and the letter is fully scaled. This whole block gives us that first part of the animation, the scroll triggered entrance of the placeholders one by one with their initials rising up and scaling into view. Next, we'll move on to the second animation where the full cards slide in and settle on top of the placeholders. So, we are creating another scroll trigger and assigning it to a variable called card slide in animation. This time, the animation starts when the top of the team section reaches the top of the screen and it scrolls for the height of three full screen lengths. So we have enough space to slowly animate all the cards in one by one. I've also pinned the team section during this phase so the rest of the page freezes while the cards animate in place. And just like before, I've enabled scrub so the entire sequence stays tied to scroll position. Inside the on update callback, we are tracking the scroll progress from 0 to 1 and looping through each team member card. First, I'm calculating how long each card should take to slide in and when it should begin. I'm staggering them one after another so the first card moves first, then the second, then the third. For each card, I'm figuring out its current progress through that entrance window. Then I'm calculating its horizontal movement, starting way off to the right and easing into the center as the scroll continues. At the same time, I'm rotating the card starting with a slight tilt and slowly leveling it out to zero. This creates that nice natural and striking effect. If you have scrolled past the point where the card should have finished sliding in, I am just snapping it into its final position, centered and upright.
After that, we move on to the scaling effect. Each card starts a little smaller and gradually scales up to its full size as the scroll moves forward. Again, I'm staggering this for each card so the timing feels fluid and layered. I am calculating the current scale progress based on scroll position and easing the size up from the smaller value to the final scale. If we are scrolled past that point, we simply lock the scale at full size and that's it. This block brings in all three cards, slides them into place with smooth motion, eases out the rotation and scales them up as the scroll unfolds. By the end of the sequence, we have transitioned from simple letter placeholders to fully animated profile cards sitting cleanly on the screen. That completes the entire animation timeline. Now just to make sure everything stays responsive, I'm adding a resize listener at the very end of the script. So anytime the browser window is resized, whether someone is rotating their phone or changing device orientation or dragging the window on desktop, we want to recheck everything and adjust the animation if needed. To avoid running it too many times in a row, I'm using a quick timeout to debounce it. This just waits a short moment after the resize drops and then calls our init animations function again. That reruns all the scroll logic from scratch and then I'm calling scroll trigger refresh to recalculate all the trigger positions and layouts. This makes the entire animation timeline fully responsive and ensures everything behaves correctly whether we resize from desktop to mobile or the other way around. So that was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.